Nested data structures in programming are complex structures where a data structure contains other data structures within it. For instance, a map or a struct might contain another map, list, or struct as one of its values. This approach allows for the organization and storage of, a more, of more detailed data, facilitating the representation of more complex relationships and attributes. So for example, a struct representing a product, like we just made in the last video, might have another struct inside of it detailing supplier information. So making the data model more comprehensive and interconnected. So let's go ahead and open up our terminal and CD to our desktop and our shopping cart again. And I'm just going to do IX space dash capital S space mix. And that'll get our Elixir shell going. And then let's open up Visual Studio Code. In our last video, we created our product struct. What if we want to store more information like supplier information with our product? So we could have things, we could have, you know, a supplier key here. And it could just be a map. We could have a map that has, I don't know, maybe our supplier name. And then you put in a, some name there, uh, address and phone number, right? But since we already know how to make structs, I think we should create our own supplier struct and have our own nested supplier struct with us. All right. So we're going to create our own supplier struct. Let's go ahead and right click the library, the lib directory and do new file and call it supplier.ex and then create a, a, a module. And then inside this module, we're going to define our struct the same way we did for products. So def struct, and then we can do, um, let's see, we have a name, let's store an address and maybe a phone number. And then we want this in square brackets, not parentheses. And since we're not defining any default variables, we have to add all of these. And if we don't add them, they'll just be, they'll be nil. Okay. So now we have our supplier struct and we created a supplier key that references our supplier struct. So now how can we work with this? How does, how do we add a supplier? How does this work? Save, save this, make sure it's saved and let's open up our terminal and do a recompile. And now let's just create a variable called product and we're going to just create a new product here. So we're going to um, create a product struct and then inside our curly braces, we're going to create a name and let's call our new product a cutting board. And our price for this new product is going to be $15.99. And then we're going to have a quantity of five. And we don't, we're not going to do reorder level or reorder amount. We're going to let those stay um, by default. And now let's add our supplier. I'm going to just expand this a little bigger so I don't have to drop to a new line. And then we have our supplier key that we've added. And inside of this supplier, it needs to be, it needs to use our supplier struct. So we're going to do supplier here. And then we have to do uh, another opening and closing curly brace. And then we can just easily add the name of our supplier. Uh, we'll call it Acme Corp. All right. And then our address, we can call our address it's going to be a string. So one, two, three Elm street. All right. And then our last key is our phone key. And then this, our phone number is also a string. So we'll do one, two, three dash four, five, six dash seven, eight, nine, zero. And then when we hit enter, we're going to have our new product with a nested supplier struct. All right, so this is pretty cool. Our default values were automatically added here, and then we have our supplier. Now, how do we access our supplier name, say? 
Um, since we have our product variable here, we can do product.supplier, and this will give us the whole supplier struct back. And then if we want the name, we can just do dot name, and now we just get the name back. And then we can do dot address, and then we can do dot phone. So it's just like accessing um, a nested object from you know other languages. So we're a product dot supplier, and then we just do dot phone or whatever key we want to access, which is pretty cool. Now let's pretend we want to update our our phone number, and we have access to our product, right? So let's create a new variable called updated product and set this equal to, so we need to do our product struct and we already have our product struct right here, product. And we want to update one piece of our supplier struct. So with the cons operator, we're going to look for the supplier key and then inside of our supplier key, we want to update our phone number. So we're going to do this and we need our supplier struct now, our supplier struct. And then to have access to that, we can find that with product.supplier and then another cons operator. And now the key we want to update, which is our phone number. And we can change our phone number to 555 dash six, seven, eight, nine, and then close uh, our supplier struct and then close our product struct. And now when I hit enter, we're going to have our updated product. Our phone number is no longer going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. It is now going to be updated with five, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hi, I'm Jacob. I help companies build scalable fault tolerance systems in Elixir. With over a decade of experience, I specialize in solving complex technical challenges, whether that's architecting new systems, implementing real-time processing, or scaling existing applications. I work with teams worldwide to deliver high-performance solutions that deliver results. If you need help with your next Elixir project, visit elixirmentor.com to schedule a call. Which is pretty cool, I think. Now, what if we wanted to update multiple values inside of our nested supplier struct? Well, we can, it's, it's easiest and more readable to do this in two steps. So we're going to just update our, our supplier. So we're going to say updated underscore supplier, and we're going to set this equal to our supplier struct. And that's our, so we have our product.supplier to get that information. And now inside of this, we can just do a cons operator and say we want to change the name to new corp and from Ac Acme Corp. And then um, let's change our phone number again to 444-5555. Um, and then close this off. So we're creating just a supplier struct here. We're not, we haven't updated anything on our product yet, but so we have our new supplier struct and then we can say our updated product now equals, now equals, um, and we do our product struct opening curly braces and then we pass in our product and then our cons operator, and then the key we wanna update, which is supplier with our updated supplier variable, okay? Supplier, I feel like, okay. And then uh, we just close off the curly braces there, and now this will update our whole supplier struct on our product struct. So there we go. Now we have new corp and then 4445555. So that's how you do multiple. And then if you want to, so now if we wanted to create a function to update this, um, let's think here. So inside maybe our inventory manager, we might want a function to update our supplier's phone numbers because their name isn't going to change and their address isn't going to change often, but their phone number might change. So let's create a function called update supplier phone. 
And this is going to take our inventory list, our product name so we can find the supplier, and then the new phone number that we're updating. And now we could do this recursively or we could just use enum.map and pass in our list, which is inventory, and then our anonymous function here. So one, one struct out of inventory is our product. And then inside of this anonymous function, we can now look for the product that matches the the product we're updating. So if product.name equals product name that we're updating, then we want to do um, this. And we already did this, so now we're just going to do a map or our, our product struct. And we're taking the product that was found and we're just piping in our to our supplier key. We're updating our supplier key. And then inside of this, we want our supplier struct, supplier. And then, so then we need to update our product.supplier. And then our cons operator, we're just updating the phone key with the new phone. And then we need an else statement. So if we're iterating through and the name doesn't match, we want to just return the product without any updates done to it. So if we save this, we now have our update supplier phone number function. Okay, so now to test our new update supplier phone, let's create a new inventory. So recompile, no op means no operations, so that means I was already compiled. But so let's create an inventory list like we've done before. So let's create our first. So we're going to create a product inside of curly braces and we need a name. So name, and we'll call this one cutting board again. And then we need a price and we'll make it $15.99. And then we need a quantity. So quantity, and we'll say we have five of these. And then we also need to have our supplier. So supplier and then inside of the supplier map oh we need our supplier key supplier key and then our supplier map we need a name which we'll call acme corp and then we need an address which we'll call one two three elm street again and these are strings and then we need a phone number and we'll make this phone number unlisted in in quotations because it's a string. And then do two closing curly braces because the supplier struct and the product struct needs to end. And then let's go ahead and do a comma and we can add another product. I'm just going to copy and paste this one so we can add them quicker. And then instead of unlisted, let's go ahead and just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, that's fine. And we'll call this Apple Street, not Elm Street. And we'll call it Apple Corp because this is where we get our apples from. And we'll have quantity 10. And these are going to be two, 276. And then it's not a cutting board it is going to be an apple. So now I'm going to close off our list here with a closing square bracket. And when I hit enter, now we have an inventory with a cutting board and apple with both with supplier information. So now let's pretend we want to change our cutting board supplier phone number from unlisted to a number. We just got one, okay? So we're going to call our inventory manager dot update, I forgot what we called our function, update supplier phone. And now we pass in our inventory, uh, the product we wanna update, which is our cutting board. And then the new phone number, which is going to be 222-333-2222. Um, 
4141. Okay, and then close those parentheses. And when I hit enter, we'll get a new inventory list back and unlisted will no longer be unlisted. And there we go, our cutting board supplier now has a phone number. And that wraps up nested data structures. As we've seen, these structures are incredibly powerful for organizing and representing complex data hierarchies. By nesting structs like our product containing a supplier, we gain the ability to model intricate relationships and details in a clear, manageable way. This approach not only simplifies the management of complex data, but also enhance, enhances the ability and maintainability of our code. And I will see you in the next video.